Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Gonna be giving you my predictions for our game against Leeds, which is today. So, score prediction, I'm gonna go with 3-1 to Manchester United. And the goal scorers for us, I'm gonna go with Marcus Rashford, Edison Cavani and... Mason Greenwood and Leeds United's goal I'm going to go with Patrick Bamford I've already given you my starting 11 prediction for the game now we've won our last three meetings against Leeds. Obviously we beat them 6-2 at Old Trafford earlier on this season. It's one of our best games this season. McTominway was the difference in that game. He scored two goals. The game at Old Trafford earlier on in the season was the first meeting between Man United and Leeds in the Premier League for like 16 years. We beaten them 4-0 in pre-season in the summer of 2019. It was in Australia. And we're beating them 3-0 at Ellen Road in the League Cup back in 2011. The last time Leeds beat us was back in January 2010 in the FA Cup third round. It was a goal from Jermaine Beckford. That game ended 1-0. Leeds have enjoyed a good season to their standards. It's been their first season in the Premier League since 2004. Because Leeds got relegated in 2004 and they was out of the top flight for 16 years. Last season they won the Championship. That was their first trophy in 28 years. Today is going to be the first time we'll be playing at Ellen Road in the Premier League since 2004. Now, I'm expecting Manchester United to win this game because we're in a good vein of form. We have won our last five games in a row and we've got a very, very good away record in the Premier League. We are unbeaten in our last 23 Premier League away games. We haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. We won our last game against Burnley 3-1. Weren't the best of performances by Manchester United, but we still got the win. Obviously, the goals came from Mason Greenwood. He scored two. Edison Cavani came off the bench and scored for us. And Burnley's goal came from Tarkovsky. Leeds United drew their last game against Liverpool 1-1. Uh, from Leeds United perspective, they'd have been very delighted with that result. Not so long ago, they beat Manchester City. 2-1 and that's probably Leeds' best result this season you know because Manchester City are the best team in England by far they are going to win the Premier League now Leeds have got a good manager in Marcelo Bielsa Marcelo Bielsa's current contract expires in the summer. It looks very, very likely that Marcelo Bielsa is not going to be signing a new contract. He's got a pretty good pedigree behind him. I don't recall him winning, any, winning anything though, but he used to manage in Argentina, did Bielsa. And he worked with Pep Guardiola a long time ago. Uh, Marcelo Bielsa taught Pep Guardiola. 
And you know, Pep Guardiola is following Marcelo Bielsa's philosophy now at Manchester City. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has beaten Marcelo Bielsa twice as Manchester United manager. If you want to count that win we had against them in pre-season. Like I mentioned on the preview though, Leeds have got some good players that could cause us problems today. Obviously, you know, Patrick Bamford, he's one of their best players. Like I said, he'll be in contention to start. Uh, they got Patrick Bamford from Middlesbrough. The good news is, from our perspective, that Rodrigo is out. Leeds got him last year from Valencia for £27 million. Rodrigo has done nowhere near as good as a lot of Leeds fans expected. Uh, Rafinha, he's one of their key players, but I think he's also out with injury. They got Rafinha last year from Rennes for £17 million, was it? Said earlier on this season that Manchester United were interested in Rafinha. They've also got Diego Lorente. He's uh, good. They got him last year. Uh, they've got Pablo Hernandez. I think he's good, but I don't think he'll be in contention to start today because he hasn't been getting in Leeds' team a lot recently. Uh, they've also got that Tyler Roberts. He could be involved today for them. Calvin Phillips, I think he'll play today. He's very, very good, Is Calvin Phillips. Um, I think Jack Harrison will be involved today. He's a good player, Jack Harrison, but he needs to improve on his crossing. Ailin and Alioski, they're good. I think they complement each other really, really well in Leeds' back line. I think they'll be playing today. Stuart Dallas, he's also very, very good. Uh, they've got Robin Koch. They got him last year. Liam Cooper, he won't be playing today because he's suspended. I think there's a few Leeds fans that are not too keen on Liam Cooper anyway. Adam Farshaw, he's out with injury. But he doesn't get in Leeds' team anyway. And their current goalkeeper is Mejule. Now... Like I said to you, we've done business with Leeds before. Uh, many years ago, we got Eric Cantona off them. We got Rio Ferdinand off them. And also Alan Smith left Leeds United to join Manchester United. Now, Eric Bay is available. I'd like to see him play today. Uh, Solskjaer did confirm in his press conference that Eric Bay is back and he's been training this week. Uh, Bay has been out with COVID. Solskjaer did say prior to the game against Burnley that he was relaxed over Eric Bay's future and he confirmed that he was in contract talks with the player. Because it said earlier on this season that contract talks were on hold for Eric Bay until he has assurances over his playing time. Because he has lost his place in the team. Bay apologised to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his Man United teammates earlier on this season. For his disrespectful behaviour because it said that Bay was furious with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because he felt disrespected and not wanted by him at the club. And it also said that Bay believes we're only offering him a new contract to simply increase his asking price. bay has got like, is it 14 months left on his current contract? 
And uh, Solskjaer did provide us with an update on Marcus Rashford. He confirmed that Marcus Rashford hasn't been training. But Solskjaer still hopes he will be involved in the game today. Marcus Rashford's had a problem with his foot. He's become injury prone as Marcus Rashford at Manchester United. Because he's sustained quite a few injuries now. We just need to keep Marcus Rashford out on that left-hand side because that's where he's more effective. Obviously, Martial's injured. He's got a knee injury and it's very, very likely he's going to be out for the remainder of the season. Solskjaer confirmed that not so long ago. Martial sustained a knee injury whilst he was on international duty with France and Phil Jones is still injured, but... He doesn't get in our 11 anyway. Jones has been out for over a year. So yeah, it will be interesting to see how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer approaches this game today. Um, our next game after Leeds is Roma in the Europa League semi-final. It's two-legged by the way. It's five semi-finals in total under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Not so long ago, Solskjaer spoke about Manchester United facing Roma in the Europa League semi-final. He did mention that Edin Dzeko will pose the biggest threat to Manchester United. But we are aware of how much of a tough game it's going to be against Roma because Roma are exactly a bad team. Uh, I think they're sitting like 7th in Serie A. Their current manager is Paulo Fonseca. They have got some good players as well. Um, don't forget they have got Emmett Mkhitaryan and Chris Smalling. I presume they'll be reuniting with Man United. Smalling was out with injury not so long ago. Uh, the last time we played Roma, we actually beat them 7-1 in the Champions League. Solskjaer knows how imperative it is to get his first trophy on the board as Man United manager. You know, we haven't won a trophy since 2017. So if we fail to win the Europa League this season, that would be exactly four years without a trophy. But even if we fail to win the Europa League, we know that Solskjaer is not going to be sat. That's already been made clear. So I can assure he will be Man United manager in the summer transfer window and he'll be Man United manager next season. I said Solskjaer does deserve at least another season because progress has been made. But... I'll stick to what I've said on my recent videos. He's not the long-term manager for Manchester United. And I presume a lot of United fans will agree with me on that aspect. And our next league game after Leeds is Liverpool. You know, it's nearly the end of the season now. Now... Recently, Manchester United fans protested against the Glazer family outside Old Trafford. Our fans burned the American flag. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer insists that the Glazer family will not sell Manchester United. He did actually tell protesters not so long ago that Joe Glazer loves the club. Now, not so long ago, our fans were protesting against the Glazers at Carrington and our fans blocked entrances into the Carrington training ground. And there was banners that were saying 51%, MUFC 20 and Glazers out. The Glazers want £4 billion to sell the club. The Red Knights have told the Glazers to sell Manchester United. Now, the Glazers recently said sorry. Joe Glazer recently released a statement and apologised to Manchester United fans of the European Super League plan because obviously the Glazers and that were planning to ditch the Champions League for the European Super League. 
The Glazers have been at Manchester United around 16 years now. They've been at the club since 2005. I hate the way the club has been run for a while. So I think we've got to get some new owners in. Uh, you know the news, don't you, regarding Ed Woodward? It, recent reports have said that Ed Woodward will get to choose Manchester United's next chief executive before he leaves. It does mention that Solskjaer will be involved in Ed Woodward's successor. Now, it recently said there's five candidates that Man United could look at to replace Ed Woodward, but it did mention that Edwin van der Sar is the favourite to replace Ed Woodward. If we got Edwin van der Sar in, I think it would be the right decision by the club. Main explanations is because Edwin van der Sar knows the club through thick and thin, he endured six years at Manchester United as a goalkeeper, obviously. He was with us from 2005 to 2011. And Edwin van der Sar has got that experience. He's currently the CEO of Ajax at the moment. And you've got to credit him because he's done very, very well at Ajax. Don't forget Edwin van der Sar was linked with a technical director's role. Earlier on this week, it got announced that Ed Woodward... Resigned as Manchester United Vice Chairman. It said he will stand down at the end of this year, but one report said Ed, Ed Woodward is expected to leave Man United in the summer rather than the end of the year. All United fans would have been delighted with the news because we've been very critical of Ed Woodward for a long time. I've already given you the main explanations why. Woodward has had a 16-year association with Manchester United. Don't forget, he's standing by Ollie. Woodward said earlier on this season that he believes Solskjaer is the right man to lead the club forward and he released a statement earlier on this season saying that the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear and even when was enjoying them really bad periods, Woodward assured that Ollie going to Solskjaer's job was safe because like I, I mentioned our board have got a soft stance on Ollie with him being a legend of the club you know so there you go but uh, like I said in regards to Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer I think he's the best manager since Ferguson. He's our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. Solskjaer has been Manchester United manager now over two years. Reflecting now on his being at the football club, he has gained some managerial experience and he has learnt quite a bit on the job. He's tried quite a few different elements as well. What I mean in that aspect is like he's tried different formations, he's rotated the squad a lot. This is Solskjaer's second full season. Next season will be his third full season, obviously. I can assure we'll finish in the top four in the Premier League this season. We'll probably finish second. Obviously, we know we're not going to win the league because we're too far behind City. Mathematically, though, we can still win it. Solskjaer said not so long ago we'll never ever give up on the Premier League title. We haven't won the Premier League since 2013. That's Eight years ago now. Like I've said to you, I do have my concerns about Oli. But there's also a lot of positives regarding Oli. You know, we have enjoyed very good periods under him where we have seen consistency and in some of them good periods he's got the best out of the team. I think his decision making in some games has also been good, but in a lot of games it hasn't been so good. So his decision making's got to be good persistently. Um, he's beaten quite a few big name managers as Manchester United manager. We've got a very good away record in the Premier League. You know, Solskjaer's got us to the Europa League semi final. He got us to the FA Cup quarter final this season. Also, got us to the EFL Cup semi final. 
You know, Solskjaer did well last season in his first full season at the club. Guided us to three semi-finals, got us qualification for the Champions League and got us a third place finish. The second highest we've finished since Ferguson. I like the way Solskjaer's promoted the youth. Solskjaer's got a lot of trustworthy in his young players. Um, he has made good signings in general as Manchester United manager. He's spent almost £300 million so far. And he's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he's come in. So there are the positives regarding Solskjaer. And we are second in the Premier League. Now, obviously Solskjaer has been criticised a lot as Manchester United manager. And a lot of United fans have been demanding him out. Obviously, they've got main explanations why. But I still presume there's a lot of United fans that are all in and they believe that he needs more time at the club. Um, Ollie's still got, like, is it a year left on his current three-year contract? Or is it just under a year? Said earlier on this season that he agreed a new three-year contract worth £30 million. Said it's likely to be two years with an option of an extra one. You know, we appointed Solskjaer in, in December 2018 to replace Mourinho and he's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019. The main explanation the club gave him the job permanently two years ago was reflect reflecting how well, he how well he did as the interim manager, you know, in that three-month period. Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Man United it was going to be a massive job despite him knowing the club through thick and thin. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is aware of how big this year's summer transfer window is going to be for himself and Manchester United in general. Solskjaer did warn earlier on this season that we may not do business as usual in the summer transfer window due to the pandemic, but he did say that he's interested in bringing in players that will be a perfect fit for the club. The summer transfer window will be Ollie's fifth transfer window as permanent Manchester United manager. I'm expecting us to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window because it did mention earlier on this season that Man United will spend big. But Solskjaer mentioned that he wants to keep transfer dealings quiet. And I've already identified the areas in the squad where we need to strengthen up. But Solskjaer should get the backing he deserves in the summer transfer window because we've got John Murtough, he's our director of football. And it was the right decision by the club getting a director of football in and we've got Darren Fletcher, he's our technical director. Now, obviously, there's a lot of players that Manchester United have been looking at. Now, I recently give you the news on Rafael Varane from Real Madrid. Now, it does say that Rafael Varane prefers a move to Manchester United over PSG. He said we've been handed a boost in our pursuit of Rafael Varane because Real Madrid are closing in on David Alaba from Bayern Munich. Now, was it the other week... There was reports coming out saying that Manchester United faced competition for Rafael Varane. Uh, Bill's Christian Fark did say that Chelsea entered the race for Rafael Varane, so reflecting on that, Chelsea looking to hijack our move. Some clubs are willing to wait until next year to get Rafael Varane, you know, when he's available on a three transfer. Reports from Spain said not so long ago, though, that Man United were in advance talks with Rafael Varane. So, Flex on night said Varane to Man United was close. It said Real Madrid's asking price was £60 million. It said we hope to lower Real Madrid's £60 million asking price. Rafael Varane's ready to leave Real Madrid. His contract talks with Real Madrid have stalled. He's got just over a year left on his current contract. I'd certainly take Rafael Varane at Manchester United, like I've mentioned on my recent videos, because he's a world-class centre-half, he's highly experienced, and he'd go very, very well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line. There's quite a few centre-halves we've looked at. He said a few weeks ago that Solskjaer had drawn up a six-man centre-back shortlist. You already know the news on Declan Rice from West Ham. Narratives come out and said the other week that Man United were 
that sorry that Declan Rice was interested in joining Manchester United. He said he asked Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw about life at Old Trafford. Says West Ham are demanding one hundred million pounds. I think hundred million pounds is too much for Declan Rice. Good player. I reckon he's worth in between fifty to sixty million, maybe seventy million at a push. Said earlier on this season that Solskjaer agreed with our recruitment team that Declan Rice would be the perfect signing for the club. The main explanations I'd taken at Man United is because he's well proven in the Premier League, predominantly a holding midfielder, and Man United need a holding midfielder. And he'd dramatically improve as wouldn't he? And he's still young and he's got a lot of development in him. Um, obviously, we're still in for Jadon Sancho from Dortmund. Um, obviously, there's still narratives coming out regarding Erling Haaland from Dortmund. But um, in the summer transfer window, we're going to focus on the incomings and the outgoings. Um, I'm expecting quite a few players to leave Man United in the summer transfer window. Obviously, it looks like Edison Cavani is going to be leaving. Um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has hinted that Cavani will leave Man United in the summer transfer window. Cavani recently put a transfer request in. He recently had a meeting with Man United and he's asked to leave Man United to join Boca Juniors. So it looks very, very Im imminent that he's going to be going to Boca Juniors. It's a shame, really, because... I'd like him to stay for next season and I presume a lot of United fans would and so too Solskjaer because, you know, he's made an impact since he's come in. Um, I think we could sell Martial as well in the summer transfer window because he's no longer good enough to represent Man United. You know, he's been out of form for the vast majority of this season. One matter, I think we could also offload him because he doesn't get in our 11 and plus he's lost that yard of pace and he's in his 30s. You know, Donny van der Beek, you know, we could offload him because he's not getting enough opportunities at Manchester United, is he? Matic, I think we could also offload him. You know, he's not one of our first choice midfielders. And I've got my strong reservations about him anyway, like I've mentioned before. <coughs> Pogba could still leave Man United in the summer, but I'd like him to stay potentially past the summer pole. Pogba. Alex Tellez. Um... He's decided that he wants to leave Manchester United. Calcio Mercato said that Juventus are interested in him and Juventus are willing to offer Adrian Rabiot in exchange for Alex Tellez. You know, Alex Tellez has played nowhere near as much as I expected. You know, when we got him in, I thought he'd have been our first choice left back immediately, but hasn't happened. You know, we got to Les in a deal worth 15.4 million from Porto. Jones, I'm also expecting us to offload him. You know, he doesn't get in our team. He's been out of injury for over a year. And more or less, he's always been inconsistent. You know, he's the only outfield player that's still here from Ferguson. Uh, Diego De La, I think we'll be looking to get rid of him permanently. He's out on loan with AC Milan at the moment. And... Sergio Romero, I think we should offload him because he's like our third or fourth choice goalkeeper now and De Gea, I think there's a good chance that we'll sell him. So the players we sell in the summer transfer window will generate money and it will help us with our rebuilding process. But like I've said, um, in the last eight years, nothing's really changed at Manchester United. You know, we have been playing catch-up, you know, we've had different managers with different philosophies. You know, the managers we've sat since Ferguson was David Moyes, Sacked him after 10 months. Worst manager we've ever had. We finished seventh under the David Moyes era, and that's the lowest we've finished in the Premier League era. Sacked Zoe Van Gaal after two years, didn't we, despite him winning the FA Cup? And we sacked Jose Mourinho after two and a half years, despite him winning three trophies, if you want to count the Community Shield, and he also got second. I think that was in his first season. So you can say Mourinho enjoyed one good season at Man United. You know, we had only... 
sat three managers over overpaid for players. We spent over £1 billion on players in the last eight years and we've brought around 37 players in since Ferguson retired. Mistakes have been made in the last eight years as well and that's why we haven't been as consistent as we'd like to have been. I do believe that the board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for a while. Already giving you the reasons why. So I hope you all enjoy the game today, guys. Um, we'll be on for match reaction this evening to talk about the game. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.